We have a mental health problem disguised as a gun problem. Those were some of the words used by Joe Rogan when talking about some of the mass shootings that have happened in America as of late. And as of late, I mean the last couple of years. Is that true? Hey everybody, I'm Daniel, I'm the psychology student who pays for the tuition, attends the lectures so you don't have to. And I bring my two cents from those things and we talk about the psychological implications of current events. Today we're gonna to talk about mass shootings and mental health and how gun violence plays a role in all of this. We're gonna talk about how things get to this point, what it takes to go shoot up a school, what we do from a humanistic perspective when we hear that news and what the appropriate response is. As always, my opinion is not the only opinion. I'm not even saying it's the right opinion. This is just one perspective to look at it, listen to what I say, put it into your toolkit, listen to other people and take it all in. You should never just seek to agree with everyone, but you should always seek to understand. This is a heavy topic to discuss. And even though it's been a couple days after the shooting, I could have done an episode earlier, like last week's episode, but I was speechless. I didn't even know where to begin. It's going to make people very upset that I didn't really care that much for this shooting. That even makes me upset to say out loud. People lost their lives. I saw it on the news for about 15 to 20 seconds. I thought, oh, that's unfortunate. And then I thought, well, what am I going to have for dinner? I'm not surprised anymore when I hear there's a shooting in the US once a month, once every two months. To say that it's upsetting, it does not justify the, the tragedy of it, but it just gets to a point where it becomes so repetitive that it's, it's almost, and this is such a crazy thing to say, it's strange if it doesn't happen after a couple of months. Like if we go four, five, six months without a mass shooting in a church, in a mosque, in a school, someone off a balcony, I'm like, wow, okay, things have been good lately. Or maybe we just haven't heard of it. So these things have become so common that I expect to hear that stuff on the news. Again, that's not taken away from the tragedy, but it's just that very realistic human component of how much can you care about a certain subject? How much can you take onto your plate before you go, look, there's nothing I can do about it. And people will say things like, and they'll tweet, sending my thoughts and prayers, like, what's that for? And what do I do with that? Well, what, are, what are the victims going to do with that? Sure, you can tell the parents and the family members and, and the, the spouses of the victims and say, look, my thoughts and prayers, I'm sorry for you. But guess what? You're going to be sorry maybe for an hour, maybe for a day, maybe for a week, and then you'll forget all about it. But the victims won't. They'll never forget. In order to truly understand what we're talking about here, look, a hundred years ago, and I made a video on the brilliance of Dr. Sigmund Freud. He made this whole brilliant conception of the unconscious and defense mechanisms. One of his defense mechanisms was called rationalization. He believed when we want to take the explicitness out of something, we will use logical terminology to make it sound not as graphic. For example, John, the company's decided we're going to let you go. And John's thinking, well, I, well, I don't need to be let go. Like, I'd, I'd like to stay. What they mean is that you're fired. We do not want you here. Leave. But, but they don't say it like that, right? This is what Freud, a hundred years ago, came up with. He said, look, people are going to rationalize things. That's a defense mechanism in order to soften the blow. John, did you cheat on me? Amanda, Amanda, listen. I just exercised my other options. So you cheated on me. No, no, look, look, Amanda, Amanda, I just temporarily withdrew my exclusivity from our relationship for about 25 minutes, right? This is rationally, this is what we do. So we might say something like, oh, there's been a school shooting. What does that mean? What does it mean when we say mass shooting? I want to describe this to you in detail so we know what we're up against. This means an individual went and first of all, they had possession of a firearm, whether they got it legally or illegally. Okay. Secondly, most of these are premeditated. That means it wasn't out of the blue. 
It wasn't, oh, I'm sorry, I lost control. This was planned beforehand. What entrance am I going to go through? What time of the day? Is there a particular person I'm gunning for? Think about that. Think about planning such a, what appears to be inhumane act, logically. And look, you might say, look, those people are crazy. Debatable. A lot of the stuff they do, rationally, it makes sense. Follow me here. In terms of, if you want to do a mat, the, the sort of gun that they buy, making sure it's an automatic, the entrance that they go through, the people that they target, it's usually defenseless people, and they open up shooting at a school, a place of learning, a place where there's children. Keep that in mind. Now, when something like this occurs, what do we do? One of the first things that we do, which is normal, and this is from an evolutionary perspective, is if there is something dangerous, what human beings will do is they will categorize it as something else. If John cheats on his wife, I'm going to say, well, John's a scumbag and, and he's over there. Because if I say, look, John's a regular guy and he just made a mistake, what I'm saying is I'm saying, well, look, I'm a regular guy. That means I'm capable of making a mistake the same way John just did. One thing that I don't like that we do is we use mental health as a scapegoat to justify someone's actions. So if someone goes and they shoot up a school or they shoot up anywhere, and our response is, well, look, he has mental health problems, so we can't hold him to the same standards as we would other people. My friends, lives are still lost. There needs to be consequences. And I worry that just shrugging our shoulders and saying, well, oh, he was schizophrenic, he heard voices, whatever. I, I do not want mental health to act as an umbrella and shield this individual from the way that we look at him. And you're going to say, well, look, Daniel, that doesn't happen because they do have consequences, whether they go to prison, whether they go to like a, a mental health, <clears throat> I don't know what, it, what it's, maybe like a mental health care center or a place where they can't voluntarily leave on their own. Maybe they get like a life sentence there, let's say. But what I'm speaking of more is the societal view, is how we look at that individual. Maybe they're sick, maybe. Maybe they need help, sure. But at the end of the day, when you do a certain action, you can't take it back. You can't say, I'm sorry. And acting, and pleading for insanity, acting insane, we can't just look the other way and say, that's okay. Oh, he had mental health problems. The reason why I bring this up is when something like this happens and we so quickly, some people want to shift to the narrative of, oh, look, it's not a gun problem. It's a mental health problem. It's a mental, look, those people, they just need, what kind of medication are we giving them? Why are we letting them out into the street? Look, there is that perspective. Sure, absolutely. And, and I'll touch on that in just a second. But the worry here is, if we emphasize on mental health, we are overlooking all the logical planning that this individual went to to go shoot up a school. Look, something has to be wrong up here for you to take someone's life. Forget take someone's life. For you to harm someone, something has to be wrong up here. There's a difference if someone asks you, have you ever been in a street fight? Versus, did you ever go and look for a street fight? The former is a fight comes and it picks you. The latter is you're sitting at home and you're thinking, I want to hurt somebody. And you go out and you find someone and you get into a physical altercation. And, and that second one, you, you should really talk to someone because there's, there's something wrong. Like there's something not right with you that needs to be checked out. So harming an individual, immediately that's a red flag. If you just want to go out and harm someone. Now you go to taking not just one person's life, but a group of people's lives, it's, it's off the chart, I mean, for rehabilitation. So now you're listening to this, well, Daniel, that's contradictory. How can you say, in one sense, you know, forget mental health, we, we shouldn't lessen the blow because it's a quote-unquote mental health problem. But on the other sense, you say, look, this person's off their rockers. The reason I make this example, the reason why we're going on this long-winded story is to illustrate I believe 
more people can be school shooters than you think. If you take an individual and you put him in the wrong place, you put him in a place where at the age of 18 he can go legally buy a firearm. You put him in a school where he doesn't feel seen, where he gets rejected, self-esteem issues, he gets bullied and he gets beat up by kids who are stronger than him. You have teachers there who do not care about his health. You have parents who cannot connect with him, who can't guide him the right way. Becoming a shooter does not become, it's not an impossible conclusion. Now, it's a low probable one. That doesn't mean that every kid who gets bullied and doesn't have the best parents ends up being a shooter of any sort. Not at all. But it is possible. And what we do when we put this mental health thing on someone is we distance them from ourselves. We go, I could never hurt anybody. I could never be a shooter. I could never take someone's life. Like, really? Are you sure about that? Because there's two different questions here. One, are you capable? And two, would you? Those are two different things. If I say, hey, look, could you go uh, abuse an animal? Did you have the capabilities to abuse an animal that's much smaller than you? Absolutely you do. But does that mean you should or that you ever would? And hopefully the answer to that is no. So we have to be careful because if we have, look, we're predisposed genetically due to different things. Maybe some people get angry a lot faster. Some people get sensitive more. We know that the age of 18 to 22, your self-esteem is extremely poor. It's extremely poor. So if you want to look at an individual who could be down at life, whether he's getting bullied or he's not in a good place or his girlfriend leaves him or boyfriend leaves him, it, it's that time. Or whatever else is going on in your life. But you can see how these psychological stressors, one after another, add up on each other. And then guess what? You want to go take that out on somebody. It's a very complicated issue. And then you look at, well, Dana, what's the treatment? What's the response? Everybody agrees something has to change. Everyone. It doesn't matter where on the political spectrum you lie. Everyone says something has to happen. On one side, we say, look, in America, get rid of the guns, ban the guns, no concealed, like none of that. No one should have guns except law enforcement. On the other side of things, we have one group of people that says, look, don't ban the guns. Guns don't kill people. People kill people. In that case, you know, you should ban a fork because you could kill someone with a fork. You should ban a knife because you can kill somebody with a knife. What you should instead do is you should put armed officers at every school. So in case there's a shooter, the armed officers can take care of the problem. Now, we all agree that something has to be done. We have two options here. We have probably many more, but for the time's sake, let's just focus on those two. They have their pros and they have their cons. The first idea of gun control is this. If we don't have guns, it is harder to get them. If it's harder to get them, it is less likely that these shootings happen. Sure, someone could get attacked with a fork or with a knife or with a baseball bat, but we would all agree that the damage that can be inflicted with a baseball bat or a knife or a fork is unbelievably less than you could do with an automatic gun. I myself have very little knowledge on guns. However, if you put your finger on the trigger and it's one of those where you're firing off bullet after bullet without the need to reload immediately. I mean, there's nothing more to be said. So look, that 18, that 21, he can be mad. But maybe if he goes into a school with a baseball bat, you could have saved some lives. Here's the con to that argument. And the con to that argument is, look, the reason guns are legal in America, and the reason why you have the right to defend yourself and this and that is because the bad guys, they'll always find ways to have guns. They can illegally get their hands on guns. And then if you ban guns, what you've just done is you, you've taken the guns from the good people and the bad people hold on to their guns. For example, in Vancouver, in Canada, shootings happen. There's gang violence. How is that possible? Guns are illegal. Like you can't just carry a gun in a holster when you're walking around in Vancouver. That's illegal. And yet shootings still happen. Why? 
Because even though they're illegal, people who are involved in drugs, who are involved in gangs, still get their hands on guns. And that's one giant con of that earlier argument. It's saying, look, you can ban guns, but, but that won't stop people from getting guns and from uh, firing. So we might as well just have everybody hold on to their guns. That's one way to look at it. The other argument, we should have security personnel, we should have officers at schools or at these buildings. So if there is a shooter on site, they shoot him first. I believe there was a shooting in Orlando a few years ago. Donald Trump's first words were, man, if we only had like armed personnel there to shoot the shooter before he shot anybody else. Again, the pro of that is, well, look, if the bad guy, if, if this individual is carrying in a firearm, the least we could do is be ready for it as much as possible. And the best thing in self-defense, if we're really going to go up the totem pole, put hand-to-hand -hand combat aside, if you have a firearm, it doesn't matter how many years I've done martial arts, it doesn't matter how many knives I have, another firearm is your best bet. Maybe people would feel safer. Now, it doesn't have to be regular people carrying guns. It could be, like I said, trained officers. It could be retired military personnel. So that's one other solution. The con to that solution is, do you want people walking around your son or daughter's playground carrying firearms? Like when you come to visit your kid, do you want to see your daughter on the swings and 10, 15 meters away from her is a guy with a gun in his holster looking around? Would that make you feel more safe? Would that make you feel like it's inappropriate? Like, why do you have so many guns so close to where my seven, eight-year-old kids are playing? I don't know what the answer is. I have my own subjective opinion. But right now, it, it doesn't matter. I don't believe it's as simple as saying, look, this is right. And if you disagree with me, then you're the reason why all these people are dying. I think that's overly simplistic. I think we've got a very complicated situation here, which is costing people their lives. What I think is going to happen is they're going to, if I had to make a prediction, I think they're going to put armed personnel at schools and at hospitals and at almost like every building. It might get to a point where you might have like officers who are just going to patrol parks carrying firearms just in case if they see something. Because after shooting, after shooting, after shooting, and they still haven't... Uh, significantly enforced gun control, I just, I don't see it changing. And I think going from, look, so many people are carrying guns to taking guns away, it would cause an uproar with a group of people. I think it would just maybe be easier societally if they said, well, look, people are already carrying guns. We're just going to have special police officers for hire at those schools or at those buildings carrying guns. I'm not saying that's what I think is the best solution, but I'm thinking logically, if they haven't enforced hardcore gun control by now, I just, I don't know. I don't know. I, I don't see much, much confidence in that happening anytime soon. The only unfortunate thing is, as you're sitting there, you know, your heart breaks for all those people who lost their lives. All those kids who were robbed, they didn't have a say in this. And you want to talk about, look, everything in life has a meaning and everything happens for a reason. What did those kids do to deserve that? What did they do to, to have that happen to them? A 10, 12, 13-year-old who all he's thinking about is getting through his math class, going home so him and his mom can go to McDonald's and then maybe he can ask if his friend can come over for a play date. Their lives were taken from them. They will never experience things like marriage, like traveling. They'll never experience the chance to go to university, to discover themselves, to grow old, to have kids of their own. Their chance was taken away from them by an individual. They did nothing to deserve this. And no matter how much jail time that person gets or whatever mental health disorder we, we stick on them, it doesn't change what just happened. So the only thing we can do 
is look at every measure possible to prevent this from happening again, or at the very least, realistically, statistically lessening the probability of it happening again. So whether it's hardcore gun control, making it extremely hard to get guns, or whether it's armed personnel at every door, at every building, just strolling along parks. Like they might be like, look, a couple of police officers, we'll just give you this vicinity, five, 10 kilometers, just, you just walk around, you patrol the area. We might have guards at every corner. If that's what it takes, okay. But we all agree something has to be done. And don't ever forget, inaction is still an action. The problem with this tug of war is if people say, hardcore gun control, let's take them all. And then other people say, no, 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 let's have enforcers at every building. We don't actually move forward anywhere. We're just in the standoff. One side has to give. It's just what we can all agree on 100% is currently it's not working. Whatever the amount of gun control right now is not working. On the plus side, the amount of you know people having guns on them is also not working. I don't know what has to happen for America to address this issue. And by address, I don't mean President Biden makes a tweet. I don't mean the, the police in that town comes out, makes a press conference and say we are deeply saddened and our thoughts and prayers are with the vic. Come on, man. So what? So what? What now? A person's life was taken against their will. A child's life was taken against their will. And it's happened and it's not the first time. What can we do so this doesn't happen again? Together, as a team, what can we do? And I'm sure we all agree we have to do something. And I genuinely think either of those options are 100% better than what we have going right now. But what do I know? That's just one man's perspective. Thank you very much for listening to today's episode. I know it's, it was a bit of a darker one. It was a bit of a heavier one. But I thought it's important. It's important to listen to. It's important to be aware of. Uh, as always, you can find my videos on YouTube. On um, the podcast. It's up on Spotify, Apple Podcasts. I appreciate all of you. Stay safe. And take care of yourselves, everybody. Bye-bye.